Hey kids, it's time to get some SML podcast all up in that. What's up, everybody? This is the SMO Podcast. I am your host, Joe. Joining as usual, Cole, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you, Joe? I'm doing pretty good. I am hopped up on orange vanilla Coke, and I am ready to do an interview in the middle of the night. And uh, you want to know how tired I am? How tired? I left my microphone muted for the first 15 minutes of the interview. <laughs> I fucking hate you, Joe. <laughs> So I wanted to take a second. This is a second (laughs) intro. I wanted to take a second and explain to our listeners that if there's any weird gaps or jumps in the conversation, I'm sorry. I'm a fucking moron. (laughs) (laughs) Normally, I would try to like edit around it and dance around it and try to cover for it. But it's after four in the morning when we're recording this intro and we just Mm want to sleep. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. That said, on to our guest, Dimitri of Sobaka Studio. How are you doing today? Yeah, hello. Uh, I'm doing okay. Uh, I'm very fine. Very ultra, very, very better than everybody else. <laughs> Everything <laughs> is ultra, ultra good. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm okay. This is the part where I asked him to give us the sales pitch on his game. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so We start with hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, some time ago, we made a game. It's called Redeemer, and it was released on Steam in 2017. Uh, it's a game about um, a Russian uh, uh, soldier in the past who was perfect killer and so on, but uh, after his corporation betrayed him and tried to make from him a cyborg, and he denied that, he wanted to be like a, uh, on his own mind, uh, he escaped the uh, corporation and hidden in Buddhist monastery where he find the peace and harmony with the world and with the everything like uh, sitting there and meditate and doing some regular things. But after 20 years they find him and he uh, have no choice but uh, eliminate and destroy everybody who he's worked with uh, some time ago. It's a game about uh, at at first. It's uh, brutal. Uh, combos, shootings, uh, 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 breaking uh, skulls, uh, uh, <laughs> disarming uh, mutants and uh, beating them with their own arms, uh, explode heads uh, and uh, so on. Plasma guns, machine guns, shotguns, uh, fists, kicks, uh, melee weapons like uh, crowbar, uh, you know, uh, uh, a lot of different melee weapons, uh, a lot of combos, a lot of features, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> I would have loved to have, like, been in the you know, brainstorming session when you're just, like, writing down all the different ways you can murder somebody. Yeah, yeah, I have a, I have a two kids, a girl and, the, uh, and a boy, girl is a six and the boy is a four, and the boy... Loves to see a redeemer, and uh, he already tried to play it a bit, but I don't allow him play a lot and not showing him uh, too much violence. But he enjoy very much, and uh, he always asks me, uh, "Can I play the redeemer?" <laughs> but I I have to uh, give to him different games like uh, Cow Two that was uh, free on Steam some time ago, or like you know Crash Bandicoot and so on. My my. My six-year-old was playing Ghost Simulator the other day, and I was like, it's safe, it's fine. And I come back from the other room, and, like, I look at the screen, and her, and she's, like, sitting there begging her sister to go get her more goats so she can summon a demon from hell. And I was like, I didn't even know this was a thing. <laughs> she's, like, sitting on the pentagram. She's so excited. She's like, we're going to get demon goats. And I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> so, you yeah. know. Your game is probably fine in comparison to Ghost Simulator. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I think this is the part when I asked about uh, 
the violence and how awesome it is and that being in the game. Something like that. I told you it's late. Oh, you know, uh, it's like a, a regular thing, like uh, all the people uh, living their lives and they see some movies, they play in some different games, they speak with other colleagues on the work, uh, friends uh, in school, in, in college and so on. <laughs> and uh, all this society, all this information and everything that goes around you are somehow penetrating inside of the brain and so on and there inside it accumulates in something uh, like, like like for example for me it was Redeemer like I, I played a lot of God of War I played the Darksiders I I, I loved, uh, loved a lot of uh, NES games uh, like uh, Battle Dogs uh, I like movies uh, Matrix I like uh, uh, cartoons like uh, uh, TMNT and so on and everything this accumulates and uh, explodes in the game like regime. So it's hard to say exactly from where it goes, but it goes from the brain where it accumulates uh, from a lot of information and everything that uh, show, goes around you all, all the entire life. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how exactly, uh, uh, how, how uh, this or that uh, gets uh, inside, but uh yeah it's just uh, mirror mirror of what's inside you know uh, let, let's let's try uh, going from opposite side um we never want to do a game without violence you know <laughs> i mean yeah 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 i know i mean um uh there's a lot of games with no violence and they they're fun but uh, most of them is not something that we want to play and do. I mean, we like to play like Journey and so on, but uh, it's hard to make such a game, and it's not inside. Uh, I, I I I watch I watch more movies uh, about uh, killing everybody and so on uh, rather than movies about um, uh, looking for sunshine and so on. <laughs> you know, um, so uh, it's just. Uh, what, something what's uh, um, uh, more regular we play in our lives. Uh, it's more convenient genre for us. We uh, no m m maybe let let let's 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 simple that uh, and point it to God of War. Like I uh, we uh, me and my friends we played the games like God of War and life love it and it's a piece of art and so on. Uh, and we tried to make a game that uh, trying to be not the same, but uh, in, 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 the, in the same way, fun. The, um, the version of the game that's coming out on console soon is called the Enhanced Edition. How does it differ from what's already on Steam? Uh, yeah, well, uh, uh, it was our first game as a team, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Before we worked in different companies, but let's don't count it. Um, <laughs> and as a, as a first game, uh, we was not quite sure uh, how people will feel it. I mean, it's hard to say from point of developer. Uh, is it uh, hard too much? Is it uh, fun too much? Or is it convenient for players and so on? Uh, while we developing the game, it was a lot of um, uh, shows and uh, feedback and so on. And a lot of people saying, you should uh, put a uh, uh, upgrade system in your game or like something that involve uh, that uh, um, uh, developing uh, through the playtime. But we always denied the, the idea because it's a bit of, uh, we thought it, it was a bit of out of our scope. But uh, when the game released, one of the biggest ca concern about that was that the game is not uh, changing to the playtime. It's uh, same and same again, more or less. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, in in enhanced edition we put upgrade systems that uh, worked pretty good with uh, with all the games. So it, it's it's kind of work on mistakes. We believe uh, it's kind of trying to uh, put to game something that will enlarge it. In somehow uh, with upgrade system you will be able to replay a game and feel different uh, uh, play um, uh, experience. Like mm -hmm. uh, one play you should you could play. Uh, like beating enemies and another play you could uh, shoot enemies and stuff like that. Um, uh, 
also we put uh, their co-op. Uh, the co-op was planned initially, but uh, close to release we decide with our partners to remove it from initial build. But it's always uh, was there, and right now it's time to release it uh, to the public. Uh, yeah, and some um, uh, w w when the game released, it was August 2017. After that, we uh, release uh, maybe around five patches with different fixes, and uh, we put uh, easy mode there. We put some languages uh, there and uh, uh, more kind of stuff. And all all of these fixes and changes will go to consoles release uh, uh, on launch. So game will be much. Uh, much filled with the fixes uh, than it was initially in Steam. Well, the the Steam version will get the update later on, sure. though. Yes. Do you have a date for that yet, or are you allowed uh, to tell us? Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it, it's we're gonna get in with, trouble. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's fun things with the dates because we or oh, it was uh, very. Um, uh, uh, Will Wind and Hurricane of uh, developing for the consoles. I mean, uh, we uh, started with some plan for s several months and then release it. Uh, uh, then we uh, was all quite almost there, but uh, a few things um, get us to put the date later. Then we change publisher and it put date later again. And now we change in uh, date again because uh, the physical copies are uh, like uh, shipping on a ship and ship goes down under water. I don't know. I mean, I'm joking, but the ship is going somewhere <laughs> different way and uh, they are not there yet. All this kind of shit. Um, so uh, right now for this time, and uh, it should be the last time when we fix in the date. It's a 12, 12, 20, 12, uh, 11, 11, 12, 12 July. Uh, 12 is between 11 and 13, right? <laughs> I, I'm, all, I'm always, always mistaken 12 and 20. 20 is a 20, it's, it's 19 plus 1, and 12 is a after 11. So 12, uh, 12 uh, July. And the uh, Steam version will be released uh, uh, one or two weeks later. It oh. uh, depends on... Uh, we will be able to fix some bugs that we will see on consoles. Uh, and we will, we will need to have some fixes for the PC version, uh, specifically for keyboard and mouse uh, support, because on consoles it's not a problem. It's not a thing. Um, and uh, for the dates, it looks like... Uh, it's 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 good. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the game the game was released initially first August uh, 2017, and now we see that the patch is going uh, live uh, on uh, around first August uh, 2019. So it's like you know anniversary and uh, happy oh, birthday nice. for the game. Yeah. So maybe it, it will be somehow connected uh, with the re release of the patch. You mentioned the different languages and the localization. How many different languages is the game available in? Uh, I don't remember exact uh, number right uh -huh. now because some languages are uh, was made by the community, and it's big uh, shout and thanks for everybody who spent their time and do this job. Uh, it's it's always very pleasure, big pleasure because people not just buy your game and play; they just they also put their time and translate the uh, uh, game to their language native, and this, of course, very respective. Um, uh, we have uh, what, 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 one language that we miss at the start, and I, I believe it was a very big mistake. Uh, it's uh, uh, on experience, I believe. It's China. China language was missed uh, on initial release, but right now we have uh, Chinese, simplified Chinese that will be released oh, oh, sh for sure. Uh, also, I suppose we have Japanese, uh, but I'm not sure quite right now. We need to check it. Uh, we have uh, Fix uh, 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 languages like um, uh, Spanish, Italian, German, uh, uh, something more, Russian, of course, and English 
uh, as a default language, of course. So some pack of languages for sure we have. <laughs> I think that's pretty much a hallmark of a dedicated fan base. If they love a game so much that they want to share it with people who can't speak whatever yeah. language the game releases in, so they work to port it to another language. Yeah, it's what I expect. Yeah. And this is the part where I ask about the possibility of online play coming to Redeemer. And uh, this is also the last one of these you'll hear, because this is around the time where my stupid ass realized that my microphone was off and turned it back on and pretended like nothing happened because I'm a dipshit. And I, whatever. Here, I asked about online play. Um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, online crash, online multiple, online online co plane is um, uh, some difficult thing for, for sure, uh, but desirable, of course. Um, um, uh, you know, uh, what, we right now working on a second game. Did you hear about it? No. Yes, yes. We're doing second game, and uh, this game contains uh, also co-op online multiplayer from the beginning. Uh, we, have, we have it. We have it from start. Yeah, we testing it, we playing it, and so on. And um, uh, you know, like every multiplayer online game, if it uh, fast paced the game, it have some legs and have some uh, online limitations and the problems and some disconnections and so on. And we are not quite sure right now how exactly it will work for the people. I mean, uh, if we will see at online games like GTA 5, for example, it have it could have million of uh, negative reviews because of disconnections, because of lags in the input uh, of the online and so on. It's difficult questions, it's difficult features to implement, and we quite not sure um, uh, is it will be a uh, uh, very fun experience or not. It should be. I mean, we will make make what we can. Uh, and if experiment will will be uh, okay, if uh, our games Namak Zoshirin from online cooperative play game will be gladly. Uh, uh, Gladly uh, get uh, to the people. <laughs> they, if, if they will like it, then we, uh, it's it's not super difficult to put it to the redeemer. It's quite one or two uh, months of work, and it could be there. It's good to hear that it's it's being considered, though. Yeah. So tell we'll us a see. bit more about uh, Nine Monkeys of Shaolin. Yeah, uh, it's our second game. It's a simpler game. It's uh, have uh, less amount of uh, features, but we also believe that uh, too much of features, it's something that uh, from one point of view hurt a redeemer and the uh, experience for the players, because we know how we want player play game, right? Yeah. But how exactly player will play, <laughs> it's a secret, and watching some streams, Showing us that people doing some crazy things that we even not planned and they, uh, <laughs> not getting in, in time what features they should use for beating these enemies or these enemies. Uh, and it's a problem. It's a problem for developers, of course. It's not a player problem. Um, and uh, in my markets, we uh, uh, decrease the amount of features and trying to do better uh, basic things, basic combat. Um, it, so it's simpler game, uh, and it's have some uh, big experience with visual uh, visual uh, art uh, in Redeemer. The picture is uh, realistic, uh, realistic tone, and it have some because realistic. It has some limitations on how to highlight your enemies, highlight your important things, and so on. In, in realistic environment, it's not quite easy. It's like outlines or so on, but it's. Uh, always putting you off from the involve, involvement to the game. And uh, in Nine Monkeys, we make a, a picture in a game like uh, we call it, uh, uh, we call it, um, uh, how it's said in English, um, like uh, put, put needles in your eyes, you know? 
<laughs> yeah. Like, uh, um, it's very contrast. It's very uh, cartoon style. I know uh, it's very uh, high uh, um, uh, colors. And we believe this term could uh, also increase some highlight for the game on the players because they will see the game. Like uh, in our days, there's millions of games and you need somehow highlight your game for more, for more others. And yeah. uh, doing uh, art that is uh, uh, rememberable, even even if it's uh, like uh, your eyes are becomes water, you know, uh, even in a case, uh, if, if, if you have a pain <laughs> looking at me, <laughs> <laughs> you will remember that. <laughs> and, tell, and tell your friends, like, I saw this game and it have crazy art, but uh, I will, I tell you this game and you will tell your friends about this game and everybody will know about the game. <laughs> 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 it's our secret plan. <laughs> well, it's a joke, of course. Uh, we are on a... Oh, on a normal way of this, but uh, it's uh, some experiment also to adjust some colors and do the picture uh, more uh, rememberable uh, from a visual point of view. So it's... Uh, I, I, okay, you ask about the game, let me talk about the game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the game is a very classical beat-em-up, but with modern touches. Uh, it's like uh, ancient uh, old times when we played uh, DMT and Battle Dots uh, on uh, with a friend uh, on a, on a coach. Uh, no, when I, you, uh, I love playing the Ninja Turtle games growing up. Yeah, sure. Uh, Golden X, uh, um, uh, and other games. There was uh, some more uh, classical uh, games in the genre. Uh, in in those times. There was uh, hard to imagine different games. Like uh, every every game should be beat them up. Right? It, it was it was like a uh, classical genre. And we uh, have some um, rememberables. We have uh, some uh, penetrations of this genre into our uh, mind and so on. So we try to and and in this genre there is quite uh, not much games persist. It's not uh, because um, nobody gets to do it, but it looks like it's very low uh, amount of players in this genre right now. It's more, right now it's better to play sandbox and uh, uh, horror games. I, I don't know, maybe not horror, but uh, different genres. But Cole likes genre... horror games. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Uh, that is my bread and butter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's popular nowadays. To play and it's not bad. It's a lot of good games in the genre. Uh, it's popular, but uh, this ancient genre, like beat 'em up, is for- forgotten. And we're trying to build a game in this and see how it looks like. Uh, yeah, and and it, and it tried to raise uh, nostalgia, nostalgia in, in, in a player. Uh, yeah. So it, it, and uh, plus uh, to that. It's uh, yeah, made in a very colorized, colorized, colorized uh, Chinese culture. It's about Chinese, Chinese and Japanese. Uh, and in, in some some times ago, they fight with each other. Uh, even before uh, World War Two, uh, when when it was pirates and uh, stuff like that. So yeah, we playing for the guy who at first. Just simple fisherman. Uh, he fishing a fish, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, the enemies uh, burn out uh, his village and his family and so on, like uh, well, like you you can imagine. Um, and uh, he get inside of the Buddhist uh, monks who help him to grow up on himself and uh, to learn some a bit of kung fu. Uh, to beat enemies back uh, and uh, to stop uh, their evil plans. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds really, really cool. Uh, when, what, what uh, time of year do you think we'll hear more about that game? Let's start with the Redeemer first, right? We release the Redeemer very soon. Um, we still working on uh, last uh, changes in the game. Like right, 
not that in the game itself, because the game is uh, certified and uh, printed on the cartridges and so on already. But we making a PC version. Me, we send into Japan region some files. We doing some stuff around that and preparing to release. So all our minds are there, and uh, it's uh, bad for nine monkeys, but uh, it's good for for nearest future. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, we are concentrating on that. Uh, the game will be released. It, it could influence how we will uh, finishing, how we will finish work on Nine Mountains. Because if uh, let's imagine, if uh, Redeemer will be very good, for example, maybe we will decide to put uh, more time to Nine Mountains and uh, make more features and so on. Maybe uh, if it will be not very good. On the consoles, well, then we will ha- try to release monkeys uh, as much as possible, maybe. So it's kind of let's not uh, doing straight uh, prognosis. It, it's uh, for right now we believe it should be, and we need it, and we have to release it not later than end of the year, right? right. So somewhere in the spring or oh, yeah, autumn. Uh, um, but let's see. Uh, just. Uh, Follow the, our Twitter and the pages and so on <laughs> to see uh, and use. <laughs> and uh, when it will be comes out, uh, we, we have we have ultra very cool trailer uh, for Nine Monkeys that is already almost done, and we will release it when it, when uh, we will be ready to announce the release date. And it's very cool trailer. You will see it when it will be released for sure because. This uh, trailer will will be reposted by everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you will not miss it. Uh, and uh, as a redeemer, uh, Nine Markets will be released and on the on the one day for all consoles and uh, PC and every, every, everywhere. So uh, that this this limitation also have uh, uh, make uh, some pressure for us because uh, if if even if we have certified versions for. Switch and uh, Xbox and PC and everybody else, but no PlayStation we can't uh, release yet until we have uh, success there. And we have online co-op that put a lot of efforts and a lot of uh, concerns for certification process for consoles, for how it uh, works uh, on this and on that uh, platform and so on. So uh, it's a lot of fixes there, but we finished game already. We have all content there. Uh, we are now porting to consoles and making the co-op uh, wo- wo- working better. So <laughs> that's how it's going. Awesome. And how does it feel? You are so close to release on console after how long? How does it feel that you're just about there? Oh, it's difficult to say, but one I can say for sure, it's ty- I tired uh, a lot, you know. I tired so much that I need, I don't know, one year of vacation. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it's very difficult because, you know, when the game was uh, almost released in Steam, I mean, Redeemer, uh, when it was closed, when it was a few days, all, all of us believe that we will have uh, some. <laughs> At least we will buy uh, two cars for everybody, you know, <laughs> two, two, two Ferrari for everybody. But um, uh, because of circumstances and uh, a lot of things like uh, overcrowded market and uh, we, uh, because of the date, we get into the uh, uh, how is it core of the weekend uh, with the flood of the games. It was a, a time when Steam uh, removed green light and uh, uh, pulled the trigger uh, off for all games that could be flowed to Steam. And um, there was a lot of different problems and, and the game was not very best. Of course, we did not uh, best our job. Um, and we was kind of kind of uh, heartbreaking, but not, not, not so so dramatic. It was uh, a good time. We loved what we made. We have a lot of good responses. We love uh, what we have at the, th- at the time, but uh, from money perspective, <laughs> we ha- hadn't uh, a chance to um, take and relax. We had uh, put our 
powers more to new game and so on. And uh, we hadn't any chance to uh, relax. I'm not uh, trying to uh, put in uh, tears in your eyes, uh, you know. <laughs> um, uh, uh, we are okay. Everybody, everything is fine. Uh, I'm just uh, trying to explain the emotions that uh, the tyrant, tyrant is the biggest uh, thing. And it, of course, it's it's um, uh, not given a chance to uh, feel like um, feel something, uh, feel some inspiration uh, and some uh, how say, um, ex- ex- excitement. It's not not uh, allows me to feel excitement, but of course, it's excitement a lot. Of course, we launch the consoles. Consoles, we, lo- we love consoles. I, I have a PlayStation. I, I my my all um, earlier uh, uh, years was there in in a, in the consoles, in the NES, in the PlayStation, and so on. So of course, it's uh, very great. Uh, uh, taking into account that we made a port ourselves. It's not was a port by some uh, side team. We yeah. made it ourselves. It's very proud proudness um, proud proud the thing and we happy and we but we tired a lot so it's difficult so this is kind of like a second chance for the game probably I, I i hope yeah i hope so too because it looks and sounds awesome i can't wait mm-hmm. to get my hands on it uh what kind of games are you playing in your spare time when you're not working on redeemer are you playing anything yeah. right now um <laughs> so I have two kids, right? Uh, four and six. So I have to play something that they will enjoy uh, also. Um, my my colleagues playing Dark Souls, playing Bloodborne, playing uh, how it said. Uh, uh, not so far. It was released uh, uh, in Japanese from from software. How it calls? Uh, Sekiro. Uh, Yes, yes. My colleagues play in Sekiro and these games like that. And I had to play, uh, you know, um, <laughs> uh, Cow the Kangaroo, uh, <laughs> uh, Rhyme in Epic Games Store. They release a for free Rhyme game. It's very good for, for the kids. It's oh, yeah. Very good. And uh, what was my best uh, experience in a game so far? And it was fantastic. I didn't expect it could be that much when Epic Games Store uh, start their uh, free campaign of the games and uh, their first game was Subnautica. It was so much fantastic experience I didn't expect. I, I, I never played sandbox games and I don't think I uh, will play I- even more. Uh, but it's not about sandbox, it's about how you uh, go deeper and how you research what happens in the planet and with the fish and it, it it was awesome, and we played with the gay with the kids, and they like to watch it, and I, I like to play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, we spent a lot of time there, and it was very cool. So Subnautica for everybody. Cole, did you play <laughs> Subnautica? I did. I actually reviewed it. Remember? No, I don't. I did. I reviewed it for. It was really good. It was. It's one of those like. See, I, I'm one of the people that gets lost in the sandbox element and I just like want to research and, and build crap for no good reason. <laughs> and that's all I got lost into doing to the point that I was like, I don't even understand what I'm doing or why. I'm just building shit now. <laughs> and I was so happy about it. That's a good time in a game where you could just build things and just have fun and just unwind and relax. I actually... uh I didn't think to play that one with the kids, though. I should. There you go. Yeah, I I don't know why. I just didn't. I didn't. Well, that's because they're too busy trying to summon demon goats on Goat Simulator to yeah. play <laughs> to play mild games like Subnautica. <sighs> I'm really nailing this mom thing. <laughs> yeah, just a little. <laughs> Are you gonna let your kids play Redeemer? I mean, at this point, we, number one, plays mostly whatever she wants. So, I, I was for a long time, like, really hardcore on, on like, you can't play that because it's immature. And I was like, 
Look, and I was playing it when I was a teenager, and I'm fine. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's regular opinion. Like, uh, yeah, it's 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 like uh, all parents uh, do this this thing. Like, I I played, or husband played, or somebody in the family played a lot of games in the future. So uh, because of that, you should not uh, forbid for kids to play and watch some crazy things. Because nobody died because of that. (laughs) I mean, I grew up, my favorite movie when I was 10, and still at, let's not talk about how old I am, but The Crow was my favorite movie when I was 10. 10! Nice. (laughs) So I remember going when I was like 12 to see the new one when it came out in theaters. And so, I mean, sometimes I can be a little obsessive about don't watch this, don't watch that, and then I just sit there and go, I'm fine, and I did it, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the worst I do is drop F-bombs randomly and <laughs> talk funny, so it's fine. Hey, it's a win-win. It really is. I mean, they if you've heard my kids, they got the talk funny thing on lock anyway, so it's all right. Now they just need to learn yeah. to curse a lot. I've I've read number one's messages to her friends. <laughs> She's a 15-year-old. <laughs> right now, my strategy for the kids is to try and put uh, good, good, uh, good feel and good choice about games. Because mm-hmm. w- w- one thing is they playing every shit uh, that they have, uh, like from, from the spam, from the advertising, and so on. And another thing is they play a piece of art and the games that is really uh, doing some more than. Uh, trying to get money from you or, or so on. So my strategy is not forbid, but uh, giving the games that have something behind it and not just, you know. <laughs> That's yeah. a good strategy, though. It really is. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I wouldn't let any of my kids play Grand Theft Auto. I've said a million times, I'm pretty sure, that me and Grand Theft Auto do not get along. Um, that's one of the few line in the sand as far as games go. Uh, however, Wick is an indie horror game. I did a review for it on the show. Um, it's rated mature, but it's literally nothing more than walking around in the woods with a candle. And sometimes you get attacked by ghost kids. Like, it's very mundane <laughs> for a, a mature rated game. Yeah. And I wasn't, I was like, I was really hesitant about letting number one play it. And I was like, she's 15. <laughs> it's fine. And now it's one of her favorites. Like every time her friends come over, she's like, oh my God, you've got to see this horror game. Nice. So, I mean, it, it's really just a matter of taking into consideration the, the, the context of the game. I mean, it's one thing to like, scare them a little bit with an urban legend and a whole different thing to give them a sandbox where they beat up prostitutes. True. <laughs> Guys, can I one minute uh, take off and I will be there here right after one minute. So how's it going? <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> so am I. <sighs> it is four o'clock. We are in the middle I'm of back. the interview. Sorry. Back. Welcome mm-hmm. back. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am very ultra very uh, fucking much. Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So as a developer, I'm assuming that you've taken your game to different trade shows. Have you ever seen anyone have a uh, do anything special with your game either be really really good at it and blow your expectations or just someone who was awful at the game? Oh, uh, I have few some stories and things about that. Uh, it was very. By the way, where are you guys located in? We're in the United I mean, States. What, yeah, what country? Well, uh, not country. What city? Uh, I'm in Pennsylvania, and she is in Kentucky. It's states or it's cities? It's That's cities, right? the state. Uh, and what cities? Berwick is my city. Uh, I live in a tiny little town called Blaine. <laughs> what happened? 
Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was three times in the U.S. in Seattle, in uh, San Francisco, and in Boston. It's okay. far from your locations, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Boston okay. is probably five, six hours from me. Oh. No, I, I think it's somewhere it's around like ten to twelve hours from here. So. Uh, in a uh, in a Boston, we was the first time on a big show. Uh, it was a Pax uh, with Redeemer. It was uh, 2017 and spring, like uh, half year before release. Uh, it was a Pax, and we have there. It, it, it was a big um, a big deal. A lot of players, a lot of people, and uh, I don't know. Is it? Uh, uh, is is it allowed for me to to say? I don't, I don't know exactly. But uh, the biggest, biggest uh, fun and biggest emotions we have for my people uh, with the black uh, skin, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> they have they have uh, much more fun than everybody else, and they uh, like uh, uh, asking for their guys, and 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 at some uh, days there was a uh, a lot of people uh, playing and laughing and uh, have having fun with doing some. Violent things in the game, <laughs> <laughs> and it was and it was very uh, emotionally um, very hard thing. Like when we were, when we uh, when when they put the energy into the, our um, uh, our bodies, you know. Uh, at the same time, we had some journalists. Uh, for example, uh, it was a uh, it was a uh, uh, distortoid. Uh, the guy who liked this genre and he loved very much demo on the packs. He loved very much. He was very, very enjoyed and so on. But after the game was released, he first uh, take uh, hands to make a review and he gave us five from ten. It was the lowest uh, rank from all of the um, uh, critics uh, all around the world. And it was because his heart was breaking. He, 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 he feels so much good on the show, but uh, full game makes uh, some disappointment, and uh, he expects it will be much more everything, but it becomes not so. Uh, That's great. disappointing. Yeah, in general, and maybe if if he didn't play on the packs, maybe the uh, rank could be higher because maybe um, yeah, because it it it, it it's disappointment like. Uh, you already uh, ready for some crazy stuff, and the game is not. Uh, and uh, you was promised, but uh, it failed. And this that was uh, uh, hard um, feel. Yeah, it was. Uh, another cool story was on uh, in London for on rest. You know, rest. It's a show in London. <laughs> Maybe not even uh, in London. So. Our game Redeemer was the only game on the old show that was uh, 18 plus, um, ah. and uh, because of that, <laughs> our stand was uh, like on the opposite side from the show. It was a wall, and we was on the opposite side from the wall. Oh, <laughs> it was man. hard to find the game, and, and, and that's fine. People still find somehow, and we had <laughs> a, we had a role uh, where it says 18 plus. Uh, and uh, on a holiday, it was Saturday or Sunday, I don't remember exactly, uh, there was a lot of crowd of kids who, after the school, uh, or instead of school, uh, goes to the show to play <laughs> different games. And, you know, as for me, it's fine. I mean, uh, if kid uh, uh, get to the show himself, then he uh, all to, all, all, all the enough. If he can take big tickets and if he can find a road, then I don't have a problem here, old enough, you know. And and, and the opposite side, if he get his parents to show, then uh, the parents uh, should watch him for him, watch he play and so on. And a lot of uh, um, parents allowed uh, their kids, even small kids, even four, five years oh, to wow. play regime. Maybe not much, but a little. And there was a, a, a woman with a man. Uh, I don't know... Do they have kids or not? Uh, but they uh, was uh, angry for me. Uh, they said I should not allow uh, uh, 
small people playing uh, games. <laughs> I said, you know, no, I, I, I have no uh, responsibility. I, I not, not, did not feel responsibility on, on my side. I, I, I said it should perhaps looking for that. Uh, and they go to organization of the show and they uh, said, uh, ah, da, da, uh, look what they're doing. <laughs> And uh, 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 what we did is just remove banner 18 plus from the stand, and everything was fine after that. <laughs> 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 Nobody else uh, take any uh, my things. No other problems. Yeah. Oh man, that's beautiful. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, I know we've been chatting for quite a while. Is there anything else that, about Redeemer that you wanted to talk about that we didn't bring up? I know. I, I think I think uh, people just should try. <laughs> uh, they should just play. Uh, of course, uh, playing on a console is uh, very... Uh, the game itself, on the begin, is looking for, uh, like a game for console. Our... Our colleagues and partners saying that on consoles <coughs> the sales are significantly less than on Steam, but maybe it depends on game. Maybe this game will be better on the consoles. I don't know. Uh, we'll just see. Uh, I just want to wish people play, try. Uh, if you have bad feel uh, or bad review, just let let me, let them uh, write it down. On a website, I don't know. Uh, is it possible on consoles? Write negative reviews or positive reviews. <laughs> uh, don't, don't be shy. Of course, give us feedback. Um, yeah. So, uh, um, the game is very good. <laughs> <laughs> game from Russia. Um, it was made with love for the players from the players. So. Uh, let's see how people will like it. Awesome. Well, again, the game is Redeemer Enhanced Edition. It releases July 12th on Xbox, uh, Switch, and PlayStation, you said? Yeah. And do you know how much the game is? Uh, we have digital and physical copies. Uh, it's, I suppose, different price. Uh, for, for physical, it's 30 bucks, I suppose. Uh, maybe with some sales, some in stores, it could be less. I'm not sure. Uh, digitally, it should be 20, but I'm not sure. Maybe 30. Not higher than 30, of course, uh, but it should be less. I'm not quite sure enough. Uh, you should check all here, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure we will find out more later this month as the game gets closer to release next month. Uh, Dimitri, it's been amazing having you on the show. You've been a blast to Thank chat with. Thank you, guys. With. Thank you very much for the inv invitation. It was a pleasure having you on. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back with more show in a little bit. Dimitri, do you have any final words to end the interview? <laughs> uh, let's have a friendship with our countries. Let's be uh, communicative with each other. Let's be... Uh, uh, let's uh, have no mad, let's have no angry, just fun, uh, games, and uh, kids. <laughs> <laughs>
Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for sticking around. Another thanks to Dimitri of Sobaka Studio for coming on and joining us. That was a fun time, wasn't it? It was. It really was. Even even given the time of day. <laughs> <laughs> and it was incredibly difficult to be a functional human being at that hour. I'm just um, glad that Dimitri had so much energy and was so excited to chat about the game. He kept that show going. Oh, yeah, he really did. He did that all on his own. <laughs> that was a one-man show. That's, that's why uh, now that everyone has heard the amended version of the show, uh, it wasn't that hard for me to go back and add some lines in of like, oh, this is where I talked about this. This is where I <laughs> talked about this. Because in 15 minutes, I only asked about three questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I had a couple. I thought I had a couple decent questions. Yeah, well, your microphone worked, so yeah, your your mm-hmm. shit showed up. <laughs> <laughs> I I did fine. Some of us at three a.m. are more functional than others. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Although to be fair, I've paid the price because I've literally just slept all day. <laughs> Well, that's good. Yeah, I had to make up for it, but I was just like, I love my family, but uh, bye. <laughs> Fuck all y'all, I'm sleeping. <laughs> if anybody makes a noise, mommy's getting angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Play some Minecraft, play some goat simulator, but don't fucking talk. <laughs> Summon the demon goats. Summon the demon goats. Oh, my God. She did it, too. She managed to convince her sister to help her summon the demon goats. Teamwork makes the dream work. I mean, I'm proud. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily upset that this is the route they've taken in life. <laughs> You're a proud mother. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. Well, we should probably continue on with the show. There was a lot of news to go over this week. Uh, Surprisingly, more than I would have expected, given that it's pre-E3. What is this shit? Everybody needs to shut up. (laughs) I know. Everything is starting to leak early. (laughs) I don't want to talk about leaks. I don't want any spoilers. Well, we're just going to talk about officially announced stuff. Okay. I don't... I don't... I've been like avoiding the leaks and spoilers. Like, I want to be surprised on Sunday. Oh, me too. I am so excited. I get, I am like, I ha- for years, I get so stupid hyped up over E3 for no good reason because I know I can't <laughs> afford any of the shit that's going to be shown. <laughs> but I still just like, and I'm like a, a kid on Christmas and I don't, I don't want spoilers. I, and that's funny because I hate surprises in like every other regard of life. Surprises are the worst. But when it's E3, it's different. Because they're video games. Yes. I guess because I actually give a fuck about what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything else, I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to be surprised. Get it out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a, a nice, healthy selection of non-E3 related news to go over. So we should probably start with that. Before we start with that, did you intention? Oh, wait, never mind. I, th- I thought that the thing was broken but it's just where skype was covering something up on the screen oh. <laughs> i was like did you break it with the chat log but it's skype covered it so that was my fault and i fucked oh. up the podcast for nothing <laughs> that's fine there's there's nothing left to fuck up it is already as bad that as shit went get. out that shit went out the window when you let me join <laughs> <laughs> that went out the window long before then <laughs> long before then <laughs> But uh, some news of the week, Nintendo Switch Online has announced three new games that are going to be joining the NES collection on June 12th, including City Connection, Volleyball, and Double Dragon 2 The Revenge. But I'm excited about Double Dragon 2. Yeah, I would play that. And Volleyball, I could I could do without. Yeah, but... Not, not too excited about that one. Uh, Square Enix has filed a trademark for, quote, collection of mana in Europe. Uh, We should probably not get overly excited. Let's not forget that they also filed a trademark for Parasite Eve in Europe recently that has so far gone nowhere. But maybe, maybe Maybe. we are just a step closer to getting uh, Seiken Densetsu 3 released in English in some form. It's kind of a double-edged sword to watch those trademarks. Oh, Root Beer is my jam just dropped a sub. 
Dropping <laughs> subs. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're going to have to get Norg to do that. I do. I got to get uh, Norg. Did we ever get our wet pancakes, by the way? No. No, not yet. God damn it. Here, the pancake mix will just have to do. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that one from? BTTV. <laughs> oh. That works. Uh, I don't know why the wet pancakes aren't going through well. <laughs> Maybe I can guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're just pancakes. Yeah, but they got that whipped cream on top. <laughs> There's nothing nefarious about the pancakes, the oh. emote. <laughs> the the whipped cream on top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. What other news is there? Skybound Games and Beamdog have announced release dates for their classic RPG re-releases that were announced earlier this year. September 24th, we'll see the release of Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate 2 released together, as well as Planescape Torment and Icewind Dale releasing together. The releases will be $49.99 each. Uh, no word on individual in, in, individual pricing for digital or if it will be bundled only, uh, but those games are planned to hit Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, so everybody gets to play, which is good. Nice, yes. And then on um, December 3rd, we'll see Neverwinter Nights. Isn't Neverwinter? Uh, is there not Neverwinter Nights already on Xbox? No, there's an MMO Neverwinter, but Neverwinter Nights is completely oh, okay. different. So yeah. it's something different, and I was just mixing up the names. Yeah, pretty much. Boy, that's a thing I would never do. Never. <laughs> I am. I for one am shocked. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a trailer was shown off for the Mortal Kombat 11 combat pack with gameplay footage of Shang Tsung. So uh -huh. that's pretty cool. After the footage of that, which, by the way, is modeled after the actor who played Shang Tsung in the original movie, which is that's amazing. Incredible. That is incredible. <laughs> they got his likeness and his voice, and he's doing the voice for everything. So that's really, really cool. That's so good. But it confirmed that Nightwolf and Sindel will both be returning and that Spawn will be a guest fighter. Interesting. I, I'm a Mortal Kombat purist, and I don't like the guest fighters. Well, they announced that two more guests are going to be coming as well. Fuck. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you were going to put a character in Mortal Kombat, Spawn's a good one. Mm-hmm. But I just, in general, like, don't be fucking with my Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <sighs> well, the other two fighters have apparently leaked through data mining. Are you interested in hearing who the other two? Fuck it, uh, let's go. Because I don't have Mortal Kombat, so. They are rumored to be Ash from the Evil Dead. <sighs> which is awesome. Okay. <laughs> and the Terminator. Fuck! <laughs> I, I don't want Terminator. Why? <laughs> in Mortal Kombat. Why not? Because, god damn it, Terminator, go be Terminator somewhere else. <laughs> God. Hey, it goes with the new movie coming out. It, that's exactly why it's there. Like, What's... you could have been, I don't know, fuck, put Venom in there for some shit. Venom eats people. Let him be in Mortal Kombat. I don't even like anti-heroes. I don't like superheroes either, come to think of it. Isn't Venom Marvel, though? Yeah, but if you're going to turn around and put Terminator in there, what's the difference? Well, because Warner Brothers works with DC, not with Marvel. Oh, fuck. Who's, yeah. who's, who's the DC equivalent of Venom that eats people? I don't know. I don't follow I don't either. that because well. Fucking nobody follows DC that well, Joe. <laughs> Terminator. Terminator is, is the equivalent of Venom. <laughs> Do you show me anywhere where Terminator ate somebody? I'll find something eventually. No, you won't. <laughs> no, I won't. I've actually seen the movies. <laughs> <laughs> For a change. Like, like 20 years ago, but I saw them. So I'm aware that he doesn't eat nobody. I'm excited at guest fighters. I like guest fighters. They're, they're interesting. They change things up. I feel like guest fighters work better in Killer Instinct. Why? Because I don't have nostalgia with Killer Instinct. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Playing that well, shit in the arcade as a kid. Yeah, but we didn't. Our, our arcade didn't have Killer Instinct. We had Mortal Kombat arcade, oh. which it was the laundromat, but. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but we had Mortal Kombat, and I played the shit out of it. 
And then when my sister bought it for me for our Nintendo at home, she was like, do not tell mom I got you this. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. <sighs> uh, anyway, early access for Shang Tsung begins on June 18th alongside the classic arcade ninja skin pack, which has uh, alternate skins for Scorpion, Sub-Zero, and probably one or two other of the ninjas to give them their old school arcade look. Good, because I don't like seeing their faces either. <laughs> I know. What's up with that? My nostalgia is stronger than I thought. Holy fuck. <laughs> Scorpion shouldn't have a face. It should just be a skeleton mm. face. A skull. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not impressed. Skeleton face. <laughs> you can tell there's some residual fuckery from us staying up late last night. Yeah, just a, a smidge. <laughs> I'm still exhausted. I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. I am too. Uh, GameStop stock has dropped a whopping 38% on declining sales and profits. Uh, oh, some, be goddamn surprised. <laughs> some analysts are saying that GameStop is, quote, burning to the ground right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How crazy is this getting for GameStop? Can you just see all the GameStop shareholders when they announced the Xbox all digital? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> they were just sitting there rocking back and forth going, why do they hate us? Why do they hate us? <laughs> Have they forgotten everything we did for them? They didn't do shit for them, but it's fine. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I think GameStop is in trouble. I don't know if there's any turning yeah. things around. Everybody was so excited when we got a GameStop and then they closed and everybody's like, wait a second, where'd GameStop go? <laughs> it was like six months later and I was like, shit, that's, that's a nail salon now. <laughs> no, apparently boy. those do better here than video games. <laughs> Uh, here's here's something E3 related. Amazon UK leaked the existence of a third Watch Dogs game or Watch Dogs game called Watch Dogs Legion, which Ubisoft ended up confirming later on in the week. Well, a, a little part of me is kind of surprised because it seems like Watch Dogs is not a franchise that does well sell wise. Like I think the games are pretty solid. They just Excuse me, sir. That was loud. <laughs> I don't know. What, well, I know Give what it is. Give me attention. Is. Number one is not here. So uh. he's upset. He's been like this for the last couple of days. Um, but yeah, it, Watch Dogs doesn't seem to get the acclaim of like, you know, Assassin's Creed and, and Division and Rainbow Six. And yet somehow it keeps getting greenlit for sequels. <laughs> 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 and I'm 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 impressed that I don't know who they're wooing at Ubisoft, but it's working for them. Hey, whatever works and whatever gets the games made. Yeah. Uh, the big twist with this one, it's supposedly set in London. The big twist is that every NPC in the game is a fully playable character, which is what? insane. How? I don't know. According to Kotaku, the system is apparently so ambitious that it may have resulted in at least one delay so far. Uh, I'm sure we'll learn more at E3, but just the idea of every character in the game being a playable character, that's, that's in interesting. That's incredible, yeah. That's, that's an impressive feat, if nothing else. I'll be curious to see if it releases like that. Yeah. Or if it's just, you know, something they're, they're going to hype up and then drop the feature eventually. It was too intensive on the current generation of consoles. Watch Dogs 4 next gen. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. We might be in for Watch Dogs 3 next gen. Next gen seems to be creeping up on us really goddamn fast. Yeah, it does. Yeah, Speaking of dicks. <laughs> Speaking of dicks, uh, the final 12 games were announced for the Genesis Mini, making it a total of 42 games. That's an impressive number. Yeah, the, the final 12 games announced are Darius, Road Rash 2, Strider, Virtua Fighter 2, Alicia Dragoon, Columns, Dynamite Heady, Kid Chameleon, Monster World 4, Light Crusader, Eternal Champions, and then this one was surprising, Tetris. Wow. The Sega Genesis version of Tetris never officially released. I think there's less than a dozen known copies to exist in the world. Double. I didn't know that it never released. Yeah. 
So that's, this is a, a pretty a surprising deal. addition. This is like the Star Fox 2 addition to the SNES Mini. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not mad at that turn of events. That's uh, pretty this, cool. This looks to be a pretty, pretty solid mini console. I might have to jump on this one. It's better than PlayStation Mini. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, There's I actually good shade. games on this now one. Now what? Now what? <laughs> Nothing could be done. It's well-deserved. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Uh, we talked about this one last week, but a Steam DB listing as well as a uh, a banner ad for Steam appeared that outed the existence of the not too secret Borderlands 2 Commander Lilith and the Fight for Sanctuary DLC. So it looks like this one is real, and you were wrong. I, I was wrong, and I, if I wore a hat, I would eat it. But <laughs> but I don't wear hats. So I don't have to eat it. So nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I get to be wrong without consequence, bitches. <laughs> suck it. I don't even have anything to suck, but you can suck it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> there goes our monetization for our three cents that we would have earned over 40 years. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> maybe one day. <laughs> but yeah, it looks I like this DLC is like official. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm surprised, but I'm glad for Borderlands fans because hey, get more shit. I didn't think yeah. you were gonna get more shit. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <sighs> uh, THQ Nordic has revealed a brand new Darksiders game called Darksiders Genesis. It is a top-down action RPG set in the Darksiders universe. Looks very similar to Diablo in play style. Uh, yeah. It is slated to hit the Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, Steam, and Google Stadia, which unveiled more details this week, and I still don't care about it. What Are we going to talk sound? about that? That was me like trying to decide whether or not to go on this tangent. <laughs> go for it, because I wasn't planning on talking about anything Stadia related. I think they said but that we the do talk games. We do, but I don't. I have so little interest in Stadia. I am mad about one thing. What thing? Um, Guilt is a Stadia exclusive. Like a complete exclusive? Yeah. Well, fuck that. And that's from the um, developers of ROM. Yeah. And I was really looking forward to see what they had coming next. And well, I'm now sure it's a time exclusive. Yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> um, I would hope it's a timed exclusive. I have not seen anything one way or another to like verify that it's not just an exclusive exclusive. Like it's literally just everybody has referred to it as Stadia exclusive. And I'm like, please be wrong. Please be wrong. Please be wrong. Because <laughs> it looks fantastic, but I might never know. <laughs> yeah. What did they say? The Stadia is going to be like a Chromecast and a controller for one thirty. It's going to cost ten bucks a month for the streaming service plus the cost of games. Which plus, you, you need to have good internet. Yeah. Now you can you can. There's a free version of it, and you can buy the games and play them over state. Excuse me, I have the hiccups. Um, <laughs> <laughs> play them over Stadia. With most of the bells and whistles for free, at no extra cost besides just the the game. Um, but there is a monthly one, and I forget the specific details between what was different. But it seemed like really minor shit that I didn't care about. And I'm about to mute and let the cat out. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it! Oh, cats are wonderful. Me and my eight cats. I'm lucky that none of them are meowing and carrying on right now. They're... Coltrane is just sleeping quietly on her chair and no one else is in here. So amazingly, I only have one cat out of eight in my room when I normally have, I don't know, a solid four or five of them. This is taking longer than I expected. I'm good. I had, I had to sit back down, put my headphones back on. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's raining and I'm moving very slow. Ah, uh, that'll uh, explain it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing anything quickly, and I get to chill at the hospital tomorrow. So I'm I'm not in a good place. <laughs> I'm moving very slow. Um, <laughs> Carnage is just messaging me about a game that just released out of nowhere on Xbox, and he's like, "Oh snap! Is the podcast live? Uh, Didn't realize <laughs> it was nine. I'll stop by." <laughs> this yes, monster. Carnage. The show is live. <laughs> Clocks are not. 
Carnage is his own suit. <laughs> they don't have achievements, so he doesn't care about them. Oh, God. <laughs> so was there anything else you wanted to say about Stadia before we move on? If it was, I done forgot it at this point. I done started thinking about letting <laughs> the cow out and Carnage <laughs> fucking things up. And now I'm like, I don't know, whatever we were talking about next. <laughs> whatever. Uh, <laughs> Destiny 2 is going to be going free to play later on this year. And by free to play, we mean the first year content in the base game will be free. Everything else will be paid add ons. Uh, they're going to be eliminating PS4 exclusive content. They're going to be getting cross save across Xbox, PC, Stadia once again, and allegedly the PS4 is involved in the cross save as well. Now, that I did want to mention because I did see that in the Stadia video when they're talking about cross save down in the, the um, fine print. Literally, as the words about cross save are coming out of the guy's mouth, there's fine print at the bottom of the screen that says, Pending approval by Sony. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe don't hold your breath on that one. <laughs> I've, I've heard it both ways so far. I've heard that PS4 is not included, and I've heard that they are included. So allegedly they're involved. Yeah. Uh, if not, they're still cross-save across Xbox, PC, and Stadia. Which is still good. Yeah. Um, uh, the- is, this, is this the first game to have cross-save? I think Paladins does. Oh. Paladins and Smite. Interesting. Yeah. And then Dauntless, but I don't know the extent of the cross save on Dauntless. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know, but uh, Destiny 2 will be moving from Battle.net to Steam on PC, which a lot of people I'm sure are going to be happy about. And all of this is going to be starting in September with the release of Shadowkeep, the year three expansion for Destiny 2. Yeah. Which is a big deal. People are losing their shit about that. We'll finally see if Bungie without Activision messing around is still good or not. Yeah. You know, I've never played Destiny, but if if it's free to play and, and at least experience some of it, I might give it a whirl. Oh, hey, Carnage just dropped 100 biddies. <gasps> you know what that means. Oh, dropping bits. Love it. <laughs> love it, love it. Even said he only came here to hear dropping bits and not listen to our stupid show. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at this point I'm fairly certain that's what most people are here for. They're just here for a Nork. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I wish he was able to join us more. He's fun to have on. Yes. Uh last bit of news I have is that Battlefield Five is now a part of EA Access. How long ago did that come out? Seven months. Seven. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's that's about right. Yeah. I'm not surprised. I'm sure Anthem is going to be next. I su- I'm surprised Anthem has taken this long. <laughs> <laughs> they might not put it in the vault just because they feel bad about it. I'm sure it'll I don't get know. there eventually. EA is unforgiving. They, they don't give a fuck. They'll put it in there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they might get people to actually play it if they give it away for free. I don't know. I haven't. I haven't even reinstalled it. I, just, I can't be asked. <laughs> it was gifted to me, and even the person who gave it to me said he was sorry. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Why did they apologize? Did they just know that the game is that bad or what? Yeah, because we'd played it together. And he was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> then why did he gift it to you? Because he didn't know it was going to be that bad to start with. <laughs> <sighs> oh, well. <laughs> hey, on the bright side, I actually paid real money for the game. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, I got that. Uh, the you don't Legion even like Dawn shooters. <laughs> I like shooters. You're not good at shooters. <laughs> that doesn't mean I don't like them. <laughs> That tends to have an effect on whether you enjoy them, though. <laughs> I still have fun with shooters. Okay, when you play in Division with me. I don't know. When are we playing Division? <laughs> Man, students got Saturdays and Sundays off now, so any fucking time. We'll figure something out. I'm always <laughs> down to play. You know that. 
I've been doing the hard carries and trying to get people ready for the raid. And then we tried the raid and we didn't get past the, the second boss. No, but it boy. turns out that it was fucking broken. Oh, uh, was it? Like, you can do it, but you, everybody has to have a DPS build because anything else, then it's just not enough to take down that boss. Like, all the other ones, you can play normally, and it's fine. But the, the second boss, um, PC the, the PC speedrun time is, like, 30 minutes, like, 26 or something like that, and the console one is still three hours. Jesus. Yeah, because it's just, it's it's unapologetically Bort. more difficult on on console. And then there was also a glitch on consoles that was causing like non-aggressive enemy types to their their AI was borked and they were being aggressive. And um so like snipers were rushing you and just popping your ass and there wasn't oh, anything nice. you could do about it. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was not helping the case of the raid any at all. I don't know. I haven't tried tried the raid again since they patched that. But it's hard to get eight people together. Yeah, I have a hard time getting two people together. I mean, you and me, well, me and Studa can, we know our schedules well enough to be okay, but adding anybody else to us is difficult. <laughs> I just want more Dauntless runs. We'll play more Dauntless with you. I think I'd have to reinstall it. I think I had to uninstall it to make room for another review game. Uh yeah. I have one that's taken up like 160 gig right now. Holy God. What the hell's taking up that much space? Uh, the Elder Scrolls. Oh. Uh, yeah. I didn't know you played that. I didn't know I played it either. No. <laughs> but I have it for review this week, so I guess I'm playing it now. <laughs> Man, it, don't you have to like play through all the other content to get to the new content? Probably. So I'll have to take extra time. Oh, yeah. You're going to be balls deep in Elder Scrolls for quite a while. I'll be able to recite that shit in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, though. I like I like shit like that that can take time. I don't usually get to enjoy things like that that take time. Yeah. So. Well, speaking of review, should we get started on ours, or was there anything else you wanted to talk about? No, if there was, I've done forgot it, so we might as well go. You've done did forgot oh! it. No, Joe, we forgot to talk about Cuphead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Tell us I'm about glad it. I looked down at my notes. I don't remember all the special details, but uh, Cuphead has been ported and is working on Tesla cars. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's also horribly unnecessary and going to result in a lot of crashes. <laughs> But it's there. Kids are going to be cursing in the back seat while dad's trying to drive. <laughs> Listen, you little sons of bitches. <laughs> Carnage said he can't wait for that $50,000 achievement list. To... Isn't it a Tesla is not just $50,000. There are more expenses than that, ain't they? I have no clue how much a Tesla runs. <laughs> Road rage quit. <laughs> They're going to be like news stories and be like... The Tesla driver stopped in the middle of the road and took a baseball bat to the car behind them. <laughs> Apparently, it was because he was stuck on a cuphead level. That he goddamn bee. Receive, he, was, he was trying to get the pacifist run. <laughs> <laughs> I, wonder if, I wonder if it will get separate achievements. That would be insane would, if, if he had to buy a Tesla vehicle. Can, I can already see the comment for Storm on TA. <laughs> why, why would they do that? Nobody's going to buy a car just to get the achievement stack. Well, clearly no one's supposed to buy a car just to get an achievement stack. But you ain't some people to are. buy a Switch just for the achievement stack, but people did it. Yeah. <laughs> Or people who are buying that new purple Xbox One S that comes with the Fortnite bonuses and it comes with a purple controller. Like, people are going nuts for that thing. I mean, I like it. Yeah, it is a nice I don't give a fuck system. about Fortnite, but if if it were an X, I would be a little more swoony over it. Oh, yeah. I don't understand why the, the Xs are still all just black and they don't make special edition Xs. 
I don't know. I wish they did. It's, it's so odd. Like, I mean, they do. They make the, the ones, like, they give away, like, the Outer Wilds one. Did you see that one? Mm-hmm. The gamepad. That was gorgeous. So, do that shit more. <laughs> yeah. They and make really all these surprised. special, limited, like, one ever exists, and that's it. Like, why the why the fuck have they not just made it possible on Design Lab to design the console? If they can do it with a controller, which has far more customizable parts than a console would, they should pick a fucking console color to go with it. Yeah. I'd Design Lab and Xbox One X. Yes! That would not be cheap. It's fine. (laughs) (laughs) Ain't cheap no how, so it's fine. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, any other news on your end then? No, that was it. All right, well, let let us dive into the reviews. We have a handful of games to talk about tonight. We're going to kick things off with Puyo Puyo Champions, developed and published by Sega of America, released May 7th on Xbox One, Switch, PC, and PS4 for $9.99. Fun, fast-paced, competitive puzzle action. Will you be the next Puyo Puyo champion? Cole, are you the next champion? I am fucking amazing at Puyo Puyo. Are you? Uh, no. (laughs) I was better than I thought I was. And I'll I'll tell you what was funny about it. So, this is basically Tetris. (laughs) In a roundabout way. Um, You're trying to make groups of colored little orbs and clear them out. And the more you clear them out, the more ghost orbs land on your opponent and makes it more difficult for them. Eventually, one of you wins. Um, There's a couple different ways to play. There's just standard Puyo Puyo, which is like you're still against an opponent and you can either play a set match within like a set amount of rounds and a set amount of time and whoever wins wins. Or you can do an endless endurance mode where you're going against as many um, AI as possible, and they get gradually harder. Um, My record is seven. Not bad. Which sounds good. (laughs) But it's not, because there's like 30 of them. (laughs) Oh, God. There's there's quite a few, and they all have... um, the, The character that represents the AI... They all have different play styles. Like some of them are more apt to go for bigger chains. Some of them try to go for fevers. Some of them try to stop you from getting your fever. Um, so it's, it's, you know, depending on which AI you get, depends on how difficult it can be. Um, but you can think you're doing really well because you've knocked out a dozen of them. You know, there's just another three, two, two or three dozen waiting in the wings trying to fuck you up. Yeah. Um, they're just taking their turn with you is all that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Running a train um, on you. Yeah, really. Um, there's also that there's the standard Puyo Puyo mode. There's also a Puyo. Puyo that's so hard to say. Um, <laughs> a fever version Um, Which is all the same rules, basically, but eventually you fill up a fever meter and then you have a couple of um, boards that will pop in in place of your standard drops where there's already um, colored squares or I say squares because I changed mine to look like squares so it was more Tetris-y and I could do oh. better <laughs> instead of the orbs. You can you can change what they look like. Um but there's already like a, a, a set arranged for the fever boards. And then you just have to deal with whatever drops and try to knock out as many of what's already there. Basically, they set you up for stuff. a giant chain as yeah. long as you drop it in the right spot. I have yet to get an all clear in a fever, though. And that upsets me. I've got <laughs> really close. Like I have finished a fever and the board have one or two blocks left. And I'm like, God damn. Damn you. <laughs> <laughs> He's so close, yet so far away. <laughs> I'll teach you to get excited. Yeah, you just think you're going to do it, and you're like, no, nah, never mind, I suck at this. Um, of course, when you've got the fever mode, you, you're you dropping more and more ghosts on the enemy. It's far easier to knock them out. I think that... Dropping the, orbs. <laughs> yeah. I think playing fever over playing two is it's far easier to go further in the endurance mode. But if you get one of the characters that actively tries to go for fever early on, forget it. 
you're fucked. You're not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, th- I played only against one AI at a time. And I think that might have been my problem. I'm kind of tempted to go back because you can play it with up to, to three AI or three people if you've got other people to play with you. So four total. Um, yeah. And I think playing against the AI was my only one AI was my downfall because they didn't have anybody. They couldn't fight amongst themselves. Mm-hmm. So they were j- the one that I was playing with was just bullying me. <laughs> and I think if I played with more, I probably would have gone farther. Um, Maybe. But, so I'm curious to try that out. I haven't had a chance to try that theory yet. I was sitting there last night after I turned it off and I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's your homework. I might have been kicking my own ass here. (laughs) (laughs) Um, One of the surprising things about this game is that it does have an online. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find anybody. And I think this may be an instance of it narrows you down too much and tries to find somebody too specifically in your region. Mm. Because it straight up asks you your country and your state. And so, like, yeah, I put him in Kentucky, and I sincerely doubt there's literally anybody else in Kentucky playing Puyo Puyo <laughs> at one in the morning. <laughs> Very true. So I couldn't find anybody. And then, like, I tried to mess with the settings, but I don't know if it was just a case of I was playing at a fucked up time or the region is just so narrow and it doesn't expand it on its own. Could be a little column just, A, little column B. Yeah, that it just couldn't find anybody. And I was like, well, I hope it works out well. And unfortunately, number one isn't here to to be my backup for things like that. Because <laughs> <laughs> normally I'm like, I can't find any play with. Go get on your console and make her play with me. Um, but she's in college right now <laughs> for the summer. So I don't have any extra help there. So I don't yeah. know. You know, it, it was just difficult to find somebody else to play with for some reason or another. One of the two. Well, I played but, um, a handful of online games when the game first launched, and I didn't have any kind of issues with lag or latency. Well, that's it good. seemed to work just fine as long as you're able to find a match, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, finding a match at, at this point is not that easy. That said, I had so much fun playing this game. Like, I forget sometimes how much I miss Tetris-like games. And it was so easy to just, like, sit back when I didn't feel well or I was just tired but I wasn't tired enough to sleep that I just wanted to relax and drop some orbs. <laughs> <laughs> the real shame honestly is that there was another Puyo game released on Xbox mm-hmm. but it was only in Japan Puyo mm-hmm. versus Tetris. Really? Yes, it is available on Xbox but only in Japan when they brought it over to America They brought it to all the consoles except Xbox, despite the fact that it exists on the Xbox in Japan. It's on my shelf. It's an amazing game. It sucks that it's only in Japanese. I would gladly rebuy the game in English to play through a solid Tetris game again on Xbox. Easy. So Sega, if you're listening. (laughs) I mean, for for what we've got in this one, I I had a good time with it. But now I'm I want to try the other one. Yeah, and I'm sad. <laughs> le- leaves you wanting just that little bit more because yeah. everybody else got Puyo Puyo versus Tetris, and we didn't. Bastards. Well, you could always import a copy, but Puyo Puyo <laughs> Champions, ten bucks. What do you think? I would have buy it. I had so much fun. I I do wish. I, this is one of those cases of it may need to go to Game Pass to buff up the online a little. Um, but as it is, I still think people should drop the 10 bucks and just, just have some fun. Sometimes you just need something mindless and and enjoyable. Yeah. And I was actually surprised it was only 10 bucks. I was honestly expecting it to be 15 or 20. Yeah. Especially given that it has online. Yeah. I bought this the night it came out. So I'm glad that we were able to cover it as well. Look, even Carnage bought it. Okay. Bought a game. Carnage (laughs) paid money for a game that never happens. That's, that's like. The, the pinnacle of recommendations. Did Carnage pay for it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Next game to talk about is called Helmut, the Badass from Hell, developed by Volcanic, published by Tutainment, released May 31st on Xbox One for 
Helma, the badass from hell, is a fast-paced bullet storm dungeon crawler that cranks the nonsense up to 11 and puts you right in the thick of it. Cole, tell us about Helma. Have you ever played Enter the Gungeon? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, then that's this game, but not. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's exactly the same play style. It's laid out almost identical. Like, the exclusive reason when you said, do you want to review this? And I was like, yes, because it looks like Gungeon. Mm-hmm. And I haven't ever even played Gungeon, but I've seen enough of it to know that, like, yeah, I want to play that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's actually a glowing <laughs> review in its own because Gungeon's incredible from from what I'm aware of. Um, but Helmet is is incredibly similar so much that there's you can even play as a rat trans transformation. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> if that's not a Gungeon call out, I don't know what it is. Um, y- you do play. <laughs> <laughs> you play initially as like a skull and a spine that floats around <laughs> <laughs> and you choose a, a transformation to take on um one oh, i can't remember what his name is it's like it's like stitch monster or something like that but like he, he's literally got a little pixel butt when you're walking away <laughs> and everything but he's like this big ghastly bulbous ogre <laughs> and he throws hammers it's uh, the more i explain this and the more i think about how i'm going to explain it the more i realize this is especially insane yeah it's fine that's, though because it's a blast that's why it says it cranks the nonsense up to 11 it really does like i i, I realize if anybody wasn't into games and heard me talking like this they think i've lost my mind <laughs> i mean you have <laughs> i have but not because of this. Yes. <laughs> this is not the indicator of why I've lost my mind. But I, <laughs> so this is um, a roguelike. Basically, you have your levels. I think there's three or four bosses. I should have made better notes. That's what I should have done. But I was having too much fun <laughs> actually playing this sh- shit to stop and write everything down. Um <laughs> But you go through a couple of, of stages and then you get to the boss and just like any other roguelike of this type, if you've played, you know, Isaac or Gungeon or even the Walking Vegetables, sometimes there's a random shop. One of my favorite little elements, though, is that there's a book that will come up called the Aya Kara. And if you have enough crystal shards, you can pay to go to this little challenge sub-level. And there, some of them are bigger than others, but basically there's a set amount of enemies in these challenge levels. And if you beat it in the time allotment, you get to unlock another transformation that you can have on you. Nice. And that is such a cool thing to do because if you're getting fucked up with one of your transformations, you don't have to die. It's like having an extra life, but now different transformations have different abilities. Like each one has um, a special, um, you know, either type of weapon or attack or something that they can use. Um, Like the stitch monster, he can charge into a group and the weaker enemies will get busted up and the others get knocked back. Or the, the, if you get lose all your health and you do go back to your state as, as the floating skull and spawn, then you have like a, a short range laser shot that you can charge up and shoot out. Um, there's another one. I can't remember what it's called. It might be the slime ball. Um, but his, his charge up is literally like this huge ass wide ass. <laughs> <laughs> laser shot that will just clear a whole room and those come back so fast you just walk through and like yeah he's only got 125 health but nothing's fucking touching you anyway so it's fine <laughs> absolutely fine um but it's a lot of fun to just go through those those challenge levels I was always disappointed if I realized I didn't have enough soul stones to unlock the challenge level I was like oh I will be back <laughs> let me go find a room to murder things in and then come back and do the, because I wanted to try out all the different, different transformations. Um, the bosses, my first thought when I, when I run into the first two bosses was this is easy enough. I've got this. I'm kicking ass, but the difficulty spike between one and two and two and three 
is absurd. unbelievable. And you're just like, never mind. I'm a fragile little butterfly and I'm going to go <laughs> wilt in the corner and die. <laughs> <laughs> And yet, for some reason, I kept going back one more time because it's a roguelite, and that's what you do. That is what you do. Um, Should we talk about the, the elephant in the room with this game? Go for it. The achievements. Oh, my God. The achievements in this game are going to piss everybody off, except <laughs> for me, because Gee. I'm in love with them. Okay, so let me just go ahead and lay this out on the line. This is the clearest way to describe why the achievements are the elephant in the room. I have so much time in this game from this week, and my gamer score is 7 out of (laughs) 1,000. And I have 7 of the achievements. (laughs) The majority of achievements in this game are (laughs) one-pointers. Yeah, although... There's like four of them that are worth decent actual like 200 points. Yeah. But the um, majority are just fucking one pointers for everything. <laughs> and I love it so much. There's I think there are the seven one pointers and then there's one that's 183 and then all the rest are 200. Yeah. And I was like... Carnage said he got the one for buying all the items from the shop already. There's like three items. No. Every time I've been in the shop, there's been like armor and speed boots and meds and and there's all kinds of shit. Like I can't ever get enough to get all that one fell swoop unless I'm missing something. I'm probably missing something. There's also a vending machine at the very beginning and you can put in codes and like you either get special weapons or other perks but not a lot of people have figured out the codes yet i found one for like cocktails and it threw up and it was like a molotov you could throw a molotov yeah i think that's the only one that's been released so far i was like i was sitting there i spent an obscene amount of time just like putting in things that i thought made sense for code and i couldn't find any (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh well i never find secrets like that so <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why i even bothered trying but i did i spent like 20 30 minutes just like i will find something i didn't <laughs> <laughs> could have done like 17 runs in that amount of time what was i thinking <laughs> you weren't i was not, not I, wanted at all. To, I wanted to do something cool for a change <laughs> That's a good well, effort. Overall, 15 bucks on Helmet. What do you think of it? Fucking buy it. This was a lot of fun. It's so ridiculous. It's so enjoyable. It does get hard, but it is a roguelite, and that's the nature of them. But I think as far as, like, easy to start with, this is probably one of the easier ones to jump into. You want to know what else just jumped? No time. A hundred biddies just jumped into the cup from <laughs> no time. So... <laughs> Dropping bits! Uh, <laughs> dropping bits! Pancakes! Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't even Wet like pancakes. pancakes. I don't even like pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, soggy and gross. <laughs> okay, carry on. What was I saying? Buy this game. Okay. Next. All right, next game to talk about is called Golem Gates, developed by Laser Guided Games, published by Digerati, released May 28th on PS4, 31st on Xbox One and Switch for $24.99. Golem Gates blends elements of real-time strategy, RTS, and card battle. Collect cards called glyphs containing your forces and powers, strategically weave them into a, de- into a deck to prepare for battle, then unleash them in streamlined, fast-paced battles. Cole, tell us about Golem Gates. I feel like I should know more about the story of this game, but I don't know jack shit. <laughs> <laughs> there's like, there's, there's no cutscenes. <laughs> there's limited dialogue. It just basically sets you down and is like, you're a harbinger. You have cards. They summon things. Don't get dead. Don't get and, dead. And that's about the best you got. <laughs> it's like I don't know why I'm trying to do the things I'm doing, but I'm going to go over here. Um, so this is basically a, a, a strategy card game, if you will. You have to build up your deck and create, you know, build it up with units that you can then spawn in that are useful to you. Um, 
so then you'll want to use those units to go into battle and basically not get dead. So you have your your basic stuff like the the little can't I can't pronounce ninety seven percent of the things in this game. <laughs> And that's why I'm using generic terms. And I apologize for that. That's just the unfortunate state of where I'm at right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I can't pronounce these names. So you have like your little pawn type type uh, creatures that you can spawn to, to fight for you. Then you've got more advanced um, guards that will help you out and, and take on bigger enemies. You can spawn turrets. Set them down. They'll clear out shit around you. I don't know why I bothered spawning anything except turrets. At one <laughs> point, I was like, "This was brilliant," and then I run out of mon- er, uh, the the energy that you use. I keep wanting to call it money because I'm so used to strategy games requiring money, <laughs> but you use energy to spawn things. And like, I ran out and couldn't have a turret, and then I just wanted to pout. <laughs> it was a terrible tragedy. Oh boy. Um, it's a it's an incredibly complicated game. This is this is definitely going to be a game that draws in fans of. I would I, normally I would be like Halo Wars too because that's my go to for strategy games. But yeah. this is more complicated than something like that. Like I managed Halo Wars too, and I learned how to play it. This one I was just struggling almost my entire existence with it. Just kicking because your it ass. was just complicated. There were so many intricacies to learn that I never felt like I really knew what I was doing well enough. It was more like, oh, I beat that. That was a happy accident. <laughs> your your map is covered in a fog of war, if you will. And and as you explore, you know, you're you're pushing that fog out and you're you're able to see more of the map. But there's still just a lot of enemies. You can't be prepared for the shit that's coming at you all the time. Even when you're sending out scout hounds, you're just like I I had no idea shit was gonna come at me from over here or over there. And and it was it was incredibly difficult to actually progress and do well. Um this is the kind of game that is going to apply to people who have time to just like commit to learning it by heart yeah, and being really into it. It's not something that you can just pick up and be like, yeah, I'm into this. You're like, no, I have to learn this. There's there's a strict (laughs) learning curve to the game that you're going to have to get around. And even even as somebody who plays strategy games and and has I've picked up a fondness for card games lately that I didn't know I had. (laughs) Um, and and these deck building games, like I like to think I'm good at them, and then a game like this comes along and shits on my face and says, "Nope, no, you're not." <laughs> it's very unfortunate. You have a way with words. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I channeled my inner Mika, uh, <laughs> but it was it it was just difficult to progress in a way that felt meaningful because I couldn't get over actually learning how to to manage my energy and and manage what I was spawning and not just doing dumb shit like sending tiny little grunts out to die horrible deaths because there were big baddies hiding in the shadows. Yeah. Um, And it's it's one of those like yeah, if you're a casual strategy person you're going to get through it with enough trial and error but it's definitely something that appeals more to the hardcore. You want to know what else appeals to the hardcore? I don't know how to make a segue for it. But uh, BX Pancakes. Latino Heat, thank you for dropping 100 biddies. Uh, that's the third set of biddies. I say we we play one of the long clips. What do you think? Go for it. Dropping bits! Ah, all over your fucking face. Ah, wet pancakes. Yes, wet pancakes indeed. Fantastic. I love it. All right, so. Love it. So as you were saying, deal. Golem Gates. <laughs> um, <laughs> difficulty aside, the game is absolutely gorgeous. There's so much detail and so much love and so much crafting has gone into creating this world that I wish I knew more about it. And I would have liked a little more dialogue and a little more explanation rather than just, hey, everything's pretty, don't get dead. 
Yeah. Um, the soundtrack is incredible. It's it's so well crafted and so well done, but just lacking in narrative and explanation. And it would have been nice if there was just a super pussy crybaby mode <laughs> rather than a simple tutorial that's like, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Um, otherwise, I it's just that it's it's one of those games that applies to a very niche group of players. And that's not necessarily bad. It's just that it's difficult. It's not for everyone. Yeah, it's not for everybody. Know what you're getting when you go into it. Um, know that you're getting a fantastic soundtrack. Know that you're getting a fantastic designed world know that it's really creative um and it's it's got that real-time strategy mixed with card deck building gameplay which is a, a neat blend really if you think about it of genres those are two that don't typically get mushed together yeah um so it's it was a neat and and <laughs> um intriguing mechanic it's just that it's difficult to get used to yeah well then 25 bucks on it what do you say i still give it a try it yeah it's not for everybody but there are definitely a a group of players out there who are just going to eat this up and then for them they won't be disappointed it's really good it's just it's not for everybody sounds good yeah all right. Well, next game to talk about is called Kododama, The Seven Mysteries of Fujisawa, developed by Artco and P-Cube, published by P-Cube, released May 31st on Steam, Switch, and PS4 for $29.99. Welcome to Fujisawa Academy, an educational institution where nothing is as it seems and every pupil hides a dark secret. Having made a pact with a demon fox and bestowing you with the power to see the truth behind the lies, you must uncover the sinister truths behind the seemingly normal facade. Dark Mika covered this one, wrote in a review, and here's what she's got to say. Kododama, The Seven Mysteries of Fujisawa is an adventure visual novel with a match three game element tossed in for good measure. You play as insert name here, who is a insert gender here, who is transferred to, you guessed it, Fujisawa High School. Also, you have a contract with a blue cat demon for some reason. I honestly wonder if maybe there was a game before this one, but I didn't see anything about it. But the story was kind of out of nowhere. Uh, You were apparently made fun of at your previous school because you were an occult club person and you managed to snag a demon contract, I guess. It doesn't really explain this shit too much. And anyways, you get tired of being bullied for being a weirdo. So you transfer to this school and immediately set upon being a weirdo again, because, you know, (laughs) that's not going to go wrong again. You meet a girl who's one of two members of the occult club and get pulled into investing the get the uh, you guessed it. Seven mysteries of the school. Who would have thought super secret shit? Yo, for real. (laughs) Wow. So So the game behaves like a visual novel most of the time. But when you go and do investigations, you sometimes come across people that you need to use your demon contract to make them tell the truth. The con. The contract granted you the power to effectively overpower someone's mind and make them reveal the truth to you. When you go into these, it turns into a match three puzzle game where you have X amount of moves. If you can't fill up their heart meter within those moves, you get a game over. If they do, they spill the beans and tell you what you want to know so you don't have to bust a cap in their ass. (laughs) (laughs) The game isn't just meant to be played through is... Ah, the game isn't just meant to be played through multiple times. It's literally forced upon you. You play through the prologue, then each chapter is about one of the seven mysteries. Your first two playthroughs are mostly just kinetic visual novels, which means no choices. After the fourth fourth mystery, some weird demon mojo reverses time because you didn't get the ending that that person wanted. Fuck, time to do it again. You know about everything that happened, and fuck that. As such, the second playthrough is very fast, and, well... Oh, God, she's getting confusing here. (laughs) Oh, no. The second playthrough is very fast, and well, you should have thought about that in the first place, but you didn't. Then you start your third playthrough, which brings up the proper adventure visual novel stuff finally, which means you get to agency to fuck stuff up or do things right, but still with match three battles. Oh, yeah. Did I mention that in the match three battles, you have a mental fight with them, and every time you fill their heart meter by a quarter, it strips them of some of their clothes until it (laughs) fell Until when it fills up, they're naked because you're a filthy fucking pervert. No nudity, though, which shocks me. So it's one of those games. Uh, I got about halfway through it, and it has two different bad endings, which you get through natural play and bad ending two. You'll likely get a fuck ton in the third playthrough. Then you have a normal end and a true ending. The true ending seems to be obtained if you obtain every word for each chapter. Another part of the demon contract that finds special words that make the match three puzzles easier. 
There's also a super special word in each chapter, too, that you have to find. With that, you can get the true ending. Otherwise, you get the normal one. I haven't obtained the normal or true ending yet, but I'm going to say the normal one is bad ending three, and the true one is good ending fucking finally. For 30 bucks, you're going to put at least 20 hours, if not more, into this with a walkthrough. So it has the hours. The game isn't a romance visual novel, which is what I thought it was going to be with some mysteries tossed in. Granted, I assume every visual novel is a romance. <laughs> Oh yeah, you also unlock a mini game which is just strippy mind battles. However, you can choose between four. That's right, four different pairs of underwear for each character. <laughs> Again, this is a Japanese game, so you're just lucky there's no tentacle monsters <laughs> violating you. <laughs> I think the game is cute, the music is good, the battle stuff is amusing and stupid, and the story is generally good. If you enjoy the typical high school occult anime character archetype and the shit that they get into an anime, then you'll utterly and completely love this. Inversely, if you can't handle a dick joke because it's too raunchy, then maybe pass on this, but everyone else, go ahead and get it. Sounds good. Panties. Panties, That was my takeaway from that. Panties. <laughs> uh, next game has nothing to do with panties. It is called Hollow, developed by MMEU, published by Forever Entertainment, released June 14th on Xbox One for $19.99. I never cared about the ship. I just wanted to find myself. I had to. Something deep in my brain, deep in my very soul, clawed at me, struggling to make sense of everything. But the sad truth is it never could. I never could. I still can't remember who I am. Cole, what's going on in this game? Um, well, there's, there's not panties, but there are naked ladies, and I use lady, sp uh, sparingly? <laughs> <laughs> like the clothes in this game. <laughs> there are none. <laughs> you know that a game is, is destined to be good when there's literally a warning at the beginning. This is not just your typical content warning. This straight up says... We are not responsible if your children see what's in this game. <laughs> That's the disclaimer this game opens with. That's beautiful. That's fantastic. <laughs> Although everything from, from your description was just totally thrown out the window when you start getting chased by the, the naked ladies with four arms that scream and, and they hurt. But you can shoot them in the head and they die, so it's fine. <laughs> 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 I expected a, a more walking sim-like horror game out of this, and I was surprised because I checked the achievement list, and it was like, shoot shoot a wanton. That's the name of the enemy ladies who will come after you. Shoot a wanton. I don't know if it's supposed to be pronounced wanton now that I say it, but it's I'm pronouncing it wanton. Um in in the head and you know kill them instantly and i was like wait this is a shooter <laughs> <laughs> this is your your typical um sci-fi themed horror you know last dude wakes up alone on a on a ship and there's nobody else there although he's not entirely alone because there are the the enemies lurking in the shadows um You'll have puzzles, you'll have goals to go around and turn on the power to get to this door or that door. It does have some stealth elements, although it doesn't seem to do much good and it's far too easy to just kill the enemies and not worry about it. Um, it's not it's not exactly the best narrative for being a horror game. Yeah. Um, not to necessarily say anything overly negative, but like the narrative is is very slow paced and and it doesn't explain a whole lot. It's it's trying to be a little more pretentious than it should be, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, like it's trying to be all deep and philosophical, and you're like, you know, you made you made a dude stuck in spaceship by himself. It's kind of every horror game trope. <laughs> yeah. Maybe just embrace that. <laughs> um, it looks incredible, though. One of the things about horror games is that they're easy to make because everything is dark, and so you don't need a lot of detail. <laughs> it's just make a world that's dark and grimy, and you're fine. And yet this one just kind of like pulls that 
plug and goes, just because it's dark doesn't mean it has to be void of detail. And so there's there's so much detail and it's so incredible. You can flip on the flashlight and even just like just generic shit that's stacked up in the corner. You're like, wow, that is really well done. <laughs> and the textures on that are incredible. And I, I found myself getting fucked up more than I'd like to admit just because I would get stopped and be looking into corners and stuff to see what I could find. Yeah. And then I would get ambushed. <laughs> and be like, well. <laughs> um, another aspect of this that they did really well, I'm, instead of saying this, hollow, there you go. Ian's fussing at me for not saying game names in the review. So another, <laughs> another I mean, positive we said aspect. it at the beginning of the review. <laughs> another positive aspect to hollow is that um, the, the ambient noise is so ungodly unnerving. So I'm a little desensitized to these dude on a spaceship uh, <laughs> kind of games. <laughs> and they can be scary. Don't get me wrong. And this one certainly is. But it's not the the situation alone that makes it scary. Like there's literally times where you're walking around and and that's the other thing when it's loading, it'll say straight up say this game was designed for you to wear headphones. Wear headphones. Because you'll just have moments where you're like, oh, I'm just exploring. I'm just looking for the switch I need to pull or or a code for the elevator. And it's like, then you randomly hear a, a disembodied voice somewhere in the distance. It's like, I'm going to pull off all your skin. And you're like, oh, okay. That's comforting. I should maybe speed up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be in this room anymore. <laughs> I'm going to pull off all your skin. Oh my god! And it's just the, that's just a fraction. Like there's there's so much creepy shit just constantly being whispered. It's a it's almost a Hellblade effect, and it gets to you, and like you'll hear the voices, and like the the hair on the back of your neck raises up, and you're like, I'm in danger. <laughs> I should not be here, and it's so unner. It's far more unnerving than the the enemies this just the way that it plays with your head with the, the ambient noise um and like i said it, it's it's easy to kind of shrug it off and be like well oh, it's it's standard horror trope but they they do play it up and they play it well um unfortunately it also plays on the horror trope of making you move slower than a motherfucker mm. You can sprint and you're still moving slow. Like the sprint sh speed should be your normal speed. <laughs> and and I get it. You're in space. You're in a spacesuit probably. It does make a clunking noise, so it's safe to assume you're in a spacesuit. So like you're clunking around when you're moving. It's fine. But I hate that slow motion. <laughs> and it makes makes the simple tasks more daunting, especially when you're already unnerved because of the ambient audio fucking with you. Yeah. And you're just like, I can imagine people get frustrated and just don't want to finish the game because they don't want to walk across the room again because it takes too long. <laughs> and that's a problem. That's that's bad game design. And I had the, the, the sensitivity turned up max. And I was still just so, so I can't imagine anybody who doesn't play with sensitivity at max trying to play this. It was it was very sluggish, even just rotating the camera. Um, the the key bindings are also a little wonky. Um, In what way? You press you press left on the D pad to cycle through your weapons. Which is fine. That's a that's a pretty standard issue. Right is typically it, or left and right. But this one's just left. But, like, it would pull up the gun, and then the gun would disappear, and I'd have no idea if I had it until I tried to shoot. Like, it just goes out of frame. And it's like, I, I don't know if that's still even there. If it's And so I would have enemies traipsing at me. Thankfully, they don't move that fast. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> but you know you'd be like okay I brought the gun up and then it's like can I shoot no wait it's gone again What? Ha I don't understand what's happening here there's a weird glitch 
bag key binding is one thing, but like it's, I don't know if I was supposed to hold. I don't know if I was just supposed to press. I could not make sure that my gun was on screen. There'd be a lot of times where I'd have enemies traipsing at me and I'm just like, I, I don't know if I'm even going to have a weapon when I press the shoot button. That's oh, probably That's bad. Yeah. <laughs> and that could, it could stand a little polish. Um, that said, if their goal is to scare the shit out of you, they did a good job. It works. I'm guessing that's their goal. Yeah. Um, but it would be nice if you weren't getting the shit scared out of you because an enemy is launching at you and you don't know if you're going to be able to shoot it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you can't run away from it because you move at the speed of smell. <laughs> so yeah. and the game could stand some polish, but it's it's got its perks as well. Well, then overall 20 bucks on it. What do you say? Um, I'm going to give it a try it. I, I do hope they work on it some. I would like to see some updates done to it. Uh, quality of life move a little faster. <laughs> um, make sure that weapons are in frame when they are ready and that flipping through the weapons doesn't just make them go poof and you don't know if they're there or not. Yeah. Those kind of things. They they very negatively affect the gameplay, and um, it's hard to say. Uh, it's tropey, and uh, it's, it needs some quality of life and some bug fixes. But man, the things they get right with the the graphics and the ambient noise and stuff is is done really well. Nice. So it kind of balances out. <laughs> Fix it, and I could give you a buy it. So. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we got one last game for you to talk about that is called Hexologic, developed and published by Mythic Owl, releasing June 14th on Xbox One and Windows 10 for $4.99. Immerse yourself in the beautiful world of Hexologic. Solve challenging yet rewarding puzzles, listen to relaxing music, and dive deep into the game's atmosphere. Cole, tell us about Hexologic. Um, so I've been in a bit of an achievement slump, and I haven't been obliged to complete a game in a while. And yet I completed Hexologic in two and a half hours in the middle of the night when I thought I was just going to like play a couple levels and go to bed. <laughs> so that's your glowing review to start with. Um, as far as gameplay goes, this is a beautifully brat little puzzle game. Um, very math heavy. I hope you're a nerd <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking at this one because um, you kind of got to be. You have hexagons laid out in various patterns. There are 90 main levels with, I think it's an additional 21 bonus levels that unlock throughout your gameplay. Um, There are also two difficulties, easy and hard, and I will get to the differences between those in a second. But to describe the actual gameplay, so if you're playing it on easy... um, You have your hexagons laid out and there will be an arrow on certain points that will have a number. Now you have the ability to click on any hexagon and put one dot, two dot, or three dots inside of that hexagon. The the arrow, any hexagons in a row below that arrow, the dots in them need to uh, to add up to that number. So if you've got one hexagon and the arrow says two, you need to have two dots in that hexagon. If that makes sense. Yeah. It's so hard to describe this without actual imagery. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where in words it's tough to explain, but in practice it makes sense. So then if you've got, say you've got two hexagons and the number is four, then you need two dots in the two hexagons to add up to four. Or one and Um, three. Or one and three which then gets more and more complicated as you go on. And then you've got to figure out how to make sometimes numbers as big as 15 and 16. And, um, you know, you're, you're stuck only being able to work with the numbers one, two, and three. The levels are broken down into, um, different worlds and, and they all have little different backgrounds to go with them, but they, they don't really affect gameplay in any way other than just being pretty. Um, if you are playing on easy, when you do get the number, then the the corresponding arrow with the number in it lights up. And the hexagon lights up. So you know that you've got everything 
in that row correct. Um, once you go back and do it on hard, however, and you can flip between easy and hard dynamically. You don't have to do them. You don't have to beat the whole game to go back and do a level on hard. Um, once you do it on hard, that green indicator to show you, yes, you've got this row correct, is gone. So if you fuck up, that's on you, and you're going to be sitting there staring until you find where you messed up. Oh, man. Um, once you have the correct number of dots in all of the appropriate hexagons, the level ends, and that's it. It goes on. There's no number of lives. There's no penalty for getting anything wrong. There's no timers. It's just take your time math it out um you would think with the limitations of hey make a number with one two and three that you would run out of options for how this plays and there was no way you would get 90 levels out of it but it does add additional um puzzle mechanics later on for example um some of the the end game levels bring in greater than and less than signs. So then you don't just need to match the number. You need to make it so that the number of dots is, like if you have three on one side and it says greater than, then you know three is greater than, your next option is two or one, right? Mm -hmm. So it limits where you can put those dots and it makes you have to think about how you're going to break the numbers down into a more meaningful way to to fill out your row. Um, in addition to that, you have some levels where it introduces a mechanic like, oh, this hexagon is a certain color. So this number that you put in this hexagon has to go in every hexagon of that color. And if you change it on one side of the board, it's going to change on the other, which then forces you to adjust. So you can't rely on, like when I said two and two equals four, and you said, well, sometimes one and three is. You can't rely on whatever your go-to would be every time. It makes you shift it up and say, oh, yeah. well, I have to break this down into three one dots instead of using three. Um, it's incredibly difficult in some of those later ones to really sluice them out. That said, I managed to play almost the entire game without a guide. And I, like I said, I did it in about two and a half hours. Um, I'm also a math nerd. <laughs> and I'm really good with deductive reasoning. So if you're not, you're probably going to struggle a little more. There are guides to help with this, though. And I did use a guide a couple of times on the harder levels because it doesn't show you which row you fucked up, I would use a guide to be like, okay, I have this, this one's right, this one's right, this one's right, and I would check my work till I found which one I would fucked up. Um, my biggest complaint is that I started using the A button. So you can use the A button to do one, two, or three. You just press A once, then it puts one, and it press it a second time, it'll do two, press it a third time, puts three, press it again, takes it back to a blank, press it again and it puts the one in and it again starts it all over again. There's also the option to use the face buttons where X is one, Y is two, and B is three. Mm. And I wish I had done that instead. If I had taught myself to do it that way with muscle memory, I wouldn't have had problems when I did because I would fuck up and like be moving quickly through it because I knew the solution and only put one when I needed to put two and thought that I had clicked two, but I'd moved on instead. So that was where my greatest mistake was. And that was more on me than the game. Yeah. <laughs> like I probably could have done it quicker if I hadn't just fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> that said, I had a really good time with it. Um, it's, it's an easy completion if you're good at this kind of stuff where you just use the guide. <laughs> yeah, if you cheat. Oh, people who cheat. I don't I don't think you would need to even use the guide. I was surprised that they existed, like I said, because I only got stuck on a couple. But um the the achievements are all just like based on beating the levels, then beat all of the secret levels, and then beat them all again on hard. Yeah. And once you've done it the first time on easy, then you go back to hard and you're like, oh, yeah, I already remember this one. I remember this puzzle. <laughs> so, so you're fine. Um, 
and then you've had extra practice from doing the harder levels and it it's easy peasy but awesome. well five yeah. bucks on hexalogic how can you say no to that how can you, how can you say no to a five dollar easy completion that's good like the fact that there are nine, 91 levels and they're all different and they all challenge you, but the the cur- difficulty curve is perfect. Like every time you start a new segment, it immediately starts you out by teaching you how to use the new mechanics in a way that it sticks with you. And it's just like, man, I've played $50 games that don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> This is good. Buy this damn game because I I have to admit this was a tough week because I really enjoyed Hollow and it, despite its difficulties and and Puyo Puyo and yet I still think Hexalogic might have been my favorite and Helmet was good too. Jeez, this was a tough one, but I think Hexalogic was my pick of the week just because it was so chill and not a lot of math games are are relaxing to play and yet this one was. Cool. So that's it's cool to hear that it's your pick of the week as well. Yeah, it was an unlikely winner, but I really did like it. I thought for sure you were going to go to Helmet for Helmet. It was a, definitely a close, and Puyo Puyo too. I was like, man, yeah, good week I, for games. Can I do that one next week so it can be a favorite? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, this was a crowded week of good games, and that's that's surprising. <laughs> that's good to hear, though. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that is it for this episode. Uh, it's been a long one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been filled with its issues and trials and tribulations, but we've made it. It's fine. We did it. See you next week with E3 news. Oh, my God. I can't wait for E3. <sighs> I just let the words fall out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm so excited. Much hype. <laughs>